What's going on everybody, Kalipas Tech here coming back at you with another video. In this video, we're going to be doing a quick comparison between the Nokia G400 5G and the Samsung Galaxy A23 5G. Now before we go any further, as always, I do want to remind you to hit that subscribe button, and if you want to learn more about either phone individually, I will be linking to several other videos about each of them in the description, as well as some information about pricing, availability, and some of my favorite smartphone accessories. But with that being said, Let's get into it. So with the Nokia G400 5G, we're getting a 6.58 inch 120Hz IPS LCD display with a resolution of 1080p, a PPI of 401, and an aspect ratio of 20 by 9. With the Samsung Galaxy A23 5G, we're getting a 6.6 inch 120Hz PLS LCD display with a resolution of 1080p, a PPI of 400, and an aspect ratio of 20 by 9 as well. So in general, these displays are pretty much the same. With 1080p resolutions, the images here are real sharp, the colors and brightness look real good as well, and although technically at 6.6 inches versus 6.58, the A23 5G is a tiny bit larger, I feel like in general the difference really isn't that noticeable, and again both phones do have 20 by 9 aspect ratios, so we're getting taller and more narrow form factors here. So overall, I wouldn't say there's really a significant difference between these two displays, but that being said, if you are going to be consuming a lot of content, then either one of these phones will be a great choice. Now for storage, both phones are getting 64GB of internal storage with microSD card expansion, but keep in mind with the Samsung Galaxy A23 5G, the international version of this phone that you can get factory unlocked does have 128, but if you get it through any US carrier, it will have 64. Now that being said, on one hand, while 64GB in my opinion really isn't ideal in this day and age, for the average user, as long as you're mindful of what you're putting on your phone and you make sure to use a microSD card whenever you can, the storage you get with these phones should be at least acceptable. For security features, both phones do have face unlock as well as fingerprint scanners right here on the power keys, so definitely great spots for a fingerprint scanner. But starting with the Nokia G400 5G, let's give them a try. There we go, one more time. And there we go. And now for the A23 5G. There we go, one more time. And there we go. So as you can see there, both fingerprint scanners were real fast and responsive, no issues at all. And again, both phones do have face unlock too, so if you want to use that instead, you always can. Now for the camera setups here, with the Nokia G400 5G, we got a water drop notch for the front facing camera. This camera is 16 megapixels. Then on the back, we got a triple camera setup with a 48 megapixel main camera, a 5 megapixel ultra wide camera, and a 2 megapixel depth sensing camera. With the Samsung Galaxy A23 5G, we got another water drop notch for the front facing camera. This camera is 8 megapixels. Then on the back, we got a quad camera setup with a 50 megapixel main camera, a 5 megapixel ultra wide camera, a 2 megapixel macro camera, and a 2 megapixel depth sensing camera. So in general, as far as features go, both phones do have pretty decent camera setups. But that being said, keep in mind, the A23 5G does have a macro camera, whereas the Nokia G400 5G unfortunately doesn't. So if you do want to get those close up detailed images, and that's really more of an important feature for you, the Samsung Galaxy A23 5G might be a better choice. That being said though, with the Nokia G400 5G, at least we are getting an ultra wide camera here. And this is honestly a little bit more unusual because with a mid-range phone like this, usually if it doesn't have both an ultra-wide camera and a macro camera, it ends up having a macro camera and no ultra-wide camera, not the other way around. And honestly, in my opinion, an ultra-wide camera is a lot more useful anyway. So personally, I'm perfectly okay with this. But that being said, if you really do want a macro camera, the A23 5G will have an advantage. When it comes to actual photo quality, both phones are really good. And honestly, for more casual photography, you're really not going to go wrong with either. That being said though, between the two, I have noticed the A23 5G does have slightly better quality. The difference isn't really huge, but at the same time, the colors are a little bit better, the lighting is more realistic, and the details just look better in general. So while on one hand, the photo quality you get with the A23 5G is still not nearly as good as what you might get with a higher end phone, compared to the Nokia G400 5G, it is at least noticeably better. But that being said, if the camera really isn't a priority for you, just keep in mind, the Nokia G400 5G still does take pretty good pictures, and for most people, it will at least get the job done. Now when it comes to RAM and processor, with the Nokia G400 5G, we're getting 4GB of RAM with the Qualcomm Snapdragon 480 5G processor. With the Samsung Galaxy A23 5G. This phone has 4GB of RAM as well, with the Qualcomm Snapdragon 695 5G processor. So in general, between the two, while on one hand, the Nokia G400 5G is really not a slow phone, the A23 5G is still going to be significantly faster. So if you're going to be on your phone a little bit more, maybe you're doing stuff like mobile gaming for example that needs a little bit more processing power, then in that case I would definitely say the A23 5G, while still not being nearly as fast as something like a Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra for example, is still significantly faster than the Nokia G400 5G. So in general, again, if you're more of a heavy user, the A23 5G will be a better choice. But that being said, if you're more of a casual user, if you're not really going to be on your phone a lot, and you're really just doing super basic activities like web browsing, 
using social media and maybe watching videos every now and then, the Nokia G400 5G will still get the job done. Now, I did run Geekbench 5 benchmark tests on both phones, and here are the scores I got. So again, as you can see, the Samsung Galaxy A23 5G does have an advantage here. So again, if you want the faster phone between the two, then definitely keep this in mind. Now, when it comes to the battery, these phones are actually pretty much the same, both having 5,000 mAh batteries, with the Nokia G400 5G supporting 20 watt fast charging, and the Samsung Galaxy A23 5G supporting 25. So in general, that 5 watt difference in fast charging really isn't going to matter that much. If you really want the best fast charging, then I guess the A23 5G will be a better choice. But honestly, either phone is going to charge up real fast anyway. So in my opinion, it doesn't really matter too much. That being said though, with 5,000 mAh batteries, keep in mind both phones are going to have great battery life and longevity. So if you're in a situation where maybe you're not always around a charger, and you want to make sure your phone's going to last all day, then either of these phones will be a great choice for that. Another cool thing here is that both phones do have NFC, so if you like to make contactless mobile payments using tap and pay, keep in mind you will be able to do that with these phones just fine. But in conclusion, which of these phones is better? In general, in pretty much every way where there's a difference, I would say the Samsung Galaxy A23 5G is a better device. Although they are close and almost the same in a lot of areas, like for example the display. Again, the displays are pretty much the same, and while not being exactly word for word identical, with either phone, you're basically going to have the same experience here. They also have the same storage, pretty much the same battery, and they both have features like 5G connectivity and NFC. That being said though, again, the Samsung Galaxy A23 5G does have a better camera, because remember, we are getting a macro camera here, whereas unfortunately, the Nokia G400 5G, while having an ultra-wide camera, still doesn't have a macro camera. And again, keep in mind, the photo quality with the Samsung Galaxy A23 5G is a little bit better, so if you want to take the best pictures between the two, then again, definitely keep this in mind. And of course, since the A23 5G is a lot faster, if you're going to be using your phone a lot, you will get a noticeably better experience here. But honestly, aside from that, those are really the only two significant differences. Otherwise, if you're looking for more of an entry-level smartphone that has a great display, pretty good performance, a good camera, and a really large battery, then you're really not going to go wrong with either phone. But this concludes my comparison between the Nokia G400 5G and the Samsung Galaxy A23 5G. Again, if you want to learn more about either phone individually, I will be linking to several other videos about each of them in the description, as well as some information about pricing, availability, and some of my favorite smartphone accessories. But that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it and found it useful, be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to follow Kalibus Tech on Twitter and Instagram. And as always, I will see you in the next video.